Hello and welcome back to Kirby SQL Talk. Today is part three in our video series where we're setting up SQL Server for high availability and disaster recovery in Azure. So in a previous video, we set up the first four steps and today we're gonna add the VMs to the domain that we had set up. We're gonna add failover clustering to the three VMs and then we're gonna validate the configuration and create the cluster. And then in a subsequent video, we'll show you the remaining steps to get this all working in Azure. Okay, let's set it up. We're going to switch over to Azure. And the first thing we want to do is go into the virtual machine. I've already set up these other twos, but for this video, I'll show you how we set this up uh, to be part of the domain that we set up in our previous video. So in our settings blade, of our VM, we're gonna click the network interfaces option. Then we'll see the network uh, IP address that's been assigned. And underneath that, what we wanna do is go to the DNS servers option. And by default, um, the, it creates an Azure DNS. We wanna do a custom DNS so that we can point to our domain controller that we've already set up. So the address is 10.1.0.4. We'll save that, and then we'll let Azure um, make those changes in the background. And we're gonna do one remaining thing before we actually log into the server. We're gonna add a firewall rule for port 1433, so that if we wanna connect to this uh, SQL instance directly from our desktop, uh, we can do that with ease. And once again, we've clicked on network interfaces, and then we click on the interface name. This brings up the next blade, and what we want to look at over here is network security group. Click on the security group that comes up in the blade. And then we're going to go to inbound security rules. Here we have a couple rules already set up that I did um, off video, but what I'd like to do is add one for port 1433. So we'll click the add button. The other ones will get refreshed in a minute. And um, we're gonna do it for TCP port 1433. And the destination port will be 1433. You see we already have a priority 1000, 1010. So we'll make this <clears throat> 1,020, it just has to be something unique. And then the action will be to allow that. And oh, we need to give it a name, so we're going to give it uh, SQL as the name. Azure validates that, the OK button gets enabled, and then that starts to update. So that's our firewall rule. Now let's RDP into the server. Um, so we're going to go into our remote desktop manager, which is just the easiest way to get in there. Double click on the server. And as soon as we get in here, um, you can see, um, get to our desktop and right click on the Windows button down here and pick system. Underneath system, you'll see that this is not part of a domain yet. You can tell that by seeing the work group down here. It says work group. We're going to click the change settings option to rename the computer or change its domain or work group. Click here. We'll click the change button. And the domain that we had set up was repco.com. Click OK. And now it's going to want, it's going to ask for a, a user that has authority to do this. So we'll go ahead and type in the name and password. This usually takes just a few seconds, but if everything works well, it'll say, welcome to the domain. We'll let that cook a little bit. And there it is, welcome to the repco.com domain. And it's gonna say that it has to restart. I like to close out windows uh, before anything. And then the fastest way uh, to restart really is um, just to click the start button down here, and then you're gonna see the power option up in the top right. There it is, click this and click the restart. 
And I'm gonna say that this was a planned restart. Click continue and we'll let our server restart. Okay, our server is successfully rebooted. We've uh, RDP'd back into it. We've brought up server manager. And now we're gonna click add roles and features. So we're gonna keep, keep clicking next until we get to the feature section. And then towards the bottom of the page, you'll see failover clustering. Click that option. It tells you what it's gonna do. It's gonna add the failover clustering management tools as well as the PowerShell uh, programs. And then we'll click next and finally click install. And then it'll go about installing those components. Okay, the feature is added. Now we'll click the close button. And at this point, we do not need to reboot. We're gonna pull up the failover cluster tools. What I like to do is uh, pin that to the desktop because you'll be using this a lot. So just type in failover and we see that failover cluster manager is brought up. We'll right click on that and say pin to start. Makes it easier to find next time. Okay, so we'll click on failover cluster manager. And what this is gonna do is um, validate the cluster, run uh, a number of tests, and at the end of that, it'll let us know if we're good to build the cluster. So we'll click the validate configuration action over here. Now we'll click next. We'll enter the name of our server, the domain name. We'll browse for, I'm sorry, we'll just hit enter here and then it should validate that for us. There it is, click next. We'll pick the run all tests option and give the wizard a minute to finish its steps and then click the next button and then it'll start running these tests. Okay, the validation test completed successfully. And if we had have validated all three nodes at the same time, we would leave this option checked and click finish and it would create the cluster. But I had validated those two other nodes, I created those and added the failover cluster features to them earlier. So now we'll go to the create cluster option. So we'll click the create cluster option and this is gonna now prompt us for the servers that are gonna be part of our clusters. So we'll add our VM1, that's gonna be our availability group replica. And then we'll add FCI1. And then of course, FCI2. Now we'll click next. Now it's gonna prompt us for a cluster name. So let's just call this a win cluster. And we are at this point ready to build the cluster. So let's let the create cluster wizard do its job and we'll come right back. Okay, the cluster is now created. So we'll click the finish button. And let's look at our failover cluster manager here. So what we wanna look at here is the nodes to make sure that they're okay. And we click this node option here and we see that this one SQL FCI two is offline, that it's down. And the reason for that is um, when we create this, uh, the wizard assigns duplicate I IP address to the cluster IP. So you see down here where it says IP 107, 10.1.0.7. Uh, well, that's conflicting with what we already have for our second node. So we're gonna go into the properties of this 
and change that. It's a pretty simple operation. We're going to choose static IP and give it 10.1.0.12 is something that's available. It's going to confirm that this needs to be taken offline and brought back online, so we'll say OK. And then our IP address is back online. We'll give it a little bit of time, but click the nodes. And at this point, you see that all three nodes are up and healthy. Okay, let's review what we did. And uh, visually, what we did was we created a Windows Server failover cluster with these three VMs that we had created in earlier videos. And then in the next video, we're going to show you how to set up the failover cluster instance. Thank you very much for joining me, and we'll talk to you in the next video.